Hello, I'm Dr. Rashi Mali Khan. In this video, I will demonstrate how to perform a pupil exam. Pupil exam is very important and a basic part of comprehensive ocular examination. It can tell us about the integrity and health of different visual pathways uh, from optic nerve to up to the optic chiasma and the e frame pupil reflex pathways and the pupil itself. While patient is viewing at distance, we check for the size of both pupils in light and dark to look for anisocoria. Remember, in anisocoria, the smaller pupil in the dark is abnormal and the larger pupil in the brightness is abnormal. Next, one eye is shown with a bright light and we look for the direct and consensual light reflexes. A normal pupil should constrict briskly when the light is shown. This is called the direct reflex. Similarly, the pupil of the contralateral eye should respond in a similar way. This is the consensual light reflex. In a normal individual, uh, assume both eyes are normal, uh, both as the first eye is illuminated, its pupil constricts and uh, remains constricted until the light is shifted to the contralateral eye. During the transfer, both pupils dilate somewhat and after another two to three seconds, the light is shifted back and the process is repeated for four to five times. As the first eye is illuminated, its pupil constricts and uh, remains constricted until the light is shifted to the contralateral eye. During the transfer, both pupils dilate somewhat. When the light arrives at the other eye, both eyes should constrict again. We compare the speed and the extent of the pupil reconstriction in the newly illuminated eye and compare the results seen in each side. If one pupil consistently constricts more weakly than does its partner, the, uh, then uh, it is probably having some pathology. If the initial constriction is weaker or if the pupil actually dilates on arrival of the light stimulus, uh, we call it pupil risk cap, there is a relative afferent pupil red effect. And we can be uh, certain of uh, some optic nerve uh, disorder, some optic nerve dysfunction. In this patient, both pupils are equally round and reactive to light. And uh, there is no any difference between each pupil on swinging flashlight test in terms of speed and amplitude of pupillary response. So she got an intact e front and a front pupillary reflex pathways. Again, in this young lady, both pupils are equally round and uh, reactive to light. On swinging flashlight test, both pupils have equal speed and uh, amplitude of the pupillary response in each eye. So there is no difference in each eye in terms of pupillary responses. She does have intact afferent and efferent pupillary pathways. When light is shown into the left eye, both pupils constrict and when it is shifted to the right, both dilate and when it is shifted to the left, both constricts again. So. The right eye has relative afferent pupillary defect, suggesting some optic nerve dysfunction in right eye. Here is a case of uh, anisocoria. The left pupil is uh, larger than the right one, and we can see that uh, the anisocoria is greater uh, in brighter situations. So, when it is shown into the left eye, there is no response in the left eye, but the consensual response in the right eye was positive. And when it is shifted to the right eye, 
the pupil remains constricted but uh, the left pupil remains dilated so this does suggest that the afferent pathways of both eyes are intact but the left eye has some efferent problem or uh, maybe some pupillary problem or it may be because of the um, pharmacological mydriasis we will talk about the anisocoria the approaches toward di towards diagnosing the anisocoria and uh, different causes of anisocoria in a future uh, video lecture in this patient you can see uh, anisocoria is there which becomes greater when light is shown into the eyes and there is no consensual reflex or a direct light reflex in the right eye suggesting uh, an efferent pupil defect or a problem in pupil itself when we are doing a swinging flashlight test we can see that when the light is shifted to the left eye it constricts and uh, when it is shifted to the right eye it dilates and when it is shifted back to the left eye it constricts again it suggests a problem in the right afferent pathways or the right optic nerve dysfunction as well so this patient has right afferent pathways as well as the right efferent pathway problems